Well, I see that the Carnivore's Facebook page is up and running again, and with a new update available for Android users, let's take a look at what people are saying. Oh my, this hurts me. Hello everyone, this is Saurian Target coming back at you with another Carnivore's Top 5 video. Haven't done one of those in a while. Where today, we're going to be looking at the top 5 dinosaurs that should be added to Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter. So basically, what this list is, in my opinion, the top 5 dinosaurs that I think should be added to Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter. And remember, this is only what I think. I am not the definitive, final authority on all things Carnivore's. I thought that with Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter getting back on its feet with renewed activity, open betas, and even a new update that I can't access yet, I thought it would be good to dive in and see what dinosaurs would make great additions to Dinosaur Hunter. And this will only count towards the mobile port, Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter. Reborn is dead in the water, so there's no use putting in ideas for it. And the mobile version seems to be getting the most activity thus far, so this video will only be dinosaur suggestions for Dinosaur Hunter mobile. And I'm going to go ahead and exclude the original Triceratops and Dilophosaurus from this list, as we all know they should already be in the game at this point. So without further ado, let's begin. So coming in at number 5, we have really any prosauropod, but specifically what I'd like to see is Massospondylus. Prosauropods are a bit of a rarity within the carnivores community. We have the Plateosaurus from the Triassic sector, and that's about it. Prosauropods aren't usually very high on the ladder when we think of dinosaurs, and as such they often get left in the dust. And I rarely see them in any dinosaur video games. In fact, outside carnivores mods, I can't off the top of my head think of any dinosaur-based game that features any prosauropods. In addition, they represent another somewhat major family of dinosaurs, one that kind of rides the middle line between sauropods and ornithopods, but remain distinctive enough to be easily recognizable. The reason I want to see Massospondylus specifically is because we really already have a Plateosaurus. And now I know a lot of people won't agree with that and they'll want to see Tatum's take on Plateosaurus because it's arguably the most well-known prosauropod representative, but I think it would be good to branch out and choose a smaller, sleeker prosauropod. Maybe one that almost resembles Tanistrophius, using its long, snake-like neck to take advantage of trees and plants other animals can't access. Or maybe it can blend in with its surroundings to hide from predators. Going with the big prosauropod route in Plateosaurus just seems like it would turn out very generic, and I'd like to see something different, maybe something sneaky, done with prosauropods. So coming in at number four, we have a new type of ankylosaur, but not from the ankylosaurus-specific subfamily. I'd like to see a notosaur, specifically, sauropelta. Really, any of the primary ankylosaurid dinosaurs, from Tarkia to Euoplocephalus, are pretty much indistinguishable from ankylosaurus in terms of design and function. They all had studded armored plating, small spikes along the side and carapace, and all had tails that ended in huge clubs. Unless Tatum takes the dangerous route for these animals, which they probably won't, then I'd like to see a different variant of armored dinosaur. One that, at least aesthetically, stands out from ankylosaurus. And I think Sauropelta would be a good pick. It's a moderate size, so making it oversized or undersized to fit the stereotypical carnivore's size swap would not really be that jarring, and it looks great. Long shoulder spikes running down the neck and shoulders, a long, thin tail, and a more elegant, less armored head. Notosaurs have always appeared, to me at least, as the offensive group of ankylosaurs, where ankylosaurus and its lookalikes are the defensive group. And I think representing both sides would be a good addition to the FMMUV32 dinosaur roster. Or, if Sauropelta doesn't work, I'd be fine with Gastonia. Because it's a secret dream of mine to see the Carnivores franchise eventually claim all of the primal prey dinosaurs. Moving down to the number 3 spot, we have an enormous hadrosaur. Specifically, Shantungosaurus, Edmontosaurus, or Olorotitan. The Carnivores franchise already has a smaller, quicker, more elegant hadrosaur, covered with Parasaurolophus and a stockier, more aggressive hadrosaur, or ornithopod, covered with iguanodon. But there's a real lack of giant herbivores, and without going straight into sauropods, I think the best route to take in adding a huge herbivore would be the addition of a huge hadrosaur. Imagine a T-Rex-sized hadrosaur, something huge, but not too slow, and definitely not defenseless. Olorotitan would obviously need a size buff, but on FMMUV32, anything is possible. 
This would help differentiate it from Parasaurolophus, and its distinctive head crest would cover the need to add Lambiosaurus or Corythosaurus. Edmontosaurus, which I personally vote should be called Anatotitan, or Shantungosaurus would be enormous swamp-dwelling herbivores, and just the thought of seeing them towering next to a T-Rex, or a Spinosaurus now, would be such a cool sight in my opinion. Taking the number two spot, we have a uniquely individualized medium to large-sized carnivore. Acrocanthosaurus, I think, works best in this situation. It's at a good size to be a middle ground between the Ceratosaurus and T-Rex, and it kind of serves as a more accurate Allosaurus-esque carnosaur for the series. And its distinctive spine helps it stand out, and some really creative ideas can be implemented into the design. Gorgosaurus would be another good pick a slick, sleek tyrannosaur to complement the hulking, monstrous rex. Gorgosaurus is my personal favorite tyrannosaur, and that's thanks in large part to its imposing brow horns, which, with the right stylistic flair, could really help this bad boy stand out in the dinosaur roster. Afrovenator would also make a good pick. With the right coloration, it could be a very effective ambush predator, perhaps with hyper-camouflage abilities. Really make something of that head crest and give it some Baryonyx-esque claws, and Afrovenator could be a really memorable addition. Carcharodontosaurus is a dinosaur I'd personally love to see at some point. I'd like to see it somehow reflect a bit of the Spinosaurus in its design, since the two lived together way back in the day on Earth. This huge predator would be a slower sub-predator to the Rex, maybe with its own secret mortal zone. Cryolophosaurus would be another unique addition, because Cryolophosaurus itself is already a unique dinosaur. Although, admittedly, I'd personally love to see Cryolophosaurus, along with Yayu Tyrannus, added to Carnivore's Ice Age, I think it would make a neat addition to the dinosaur roster, perhaps as a chameleon-like dinosaur, one exclusive to the cooler northern islands, like the Ancient Temple, if we could ever get the C1 maps put in. Eustriptospondylus would also make a neat addition, if done right. I've always seen Eustriptospondylus as a little brother to Allosaurus, and it would be neat to see what kind of creative relationship could be formed between the alien Allosaurus and the alien Eustriptospondylus. In reference to its appearance in Walking with Dinosaurs, it might be cool to see Eustriptospondylus as a more aquatic dinosaur, spawning and remaining around water, perhaps sporting rough, fish-like scales, and maybe even webbed toes. Ablosaurus would also make an interesting addition to the dinosaur roster, again, if done right. Because the arms of Ablosaurus are so short, I think it would be very interesting to see the FMMUV32 Ablosaurus just armless, bringing up the question of how these creatures developed on the planet, or maybe with Shuvia-like claws instead of arms. And now, here are some honorable mentions. First, and I'll lump these all together, would be the rest of the cityscape dinosaurs. Tatum has already done a fair job bringing back the Oviraptor and a fantastic job with the Coelophysis. And I'd really like to see Suchomimus, Nanotyrannus, and Giganotosaurus added, for at least completionist's sake. I think Udonoceratops would be an incredibly cool Leptoceratopsid dinosaur, as its enormous size would make it such an odd beast. Perhaps it could be extremely brutish and bulky like the Iguanodon, to help set it apart from the already frightful herbivore lineup. Another sauropod would be great, as FMMUV32 only has two official titans, Camarasaurus is the first one that comes to mind. It's of a good size, because you don't want a dinosaur that's too big taking up space in the trophy room. And it's pretty well known thanks to programs like When Dinosaurs Roamed America and Jurassic Fight Club. Volcanodon would be another great addition, as it's not too big yet retains the typical sauropod features and has a pretty B.A. name. Brachytrachylophon would be my personal favorite pick, however. Short-necked sauropods are really unique among dinosaurs, and adding one to the carnivore's dinosaur lineup would make for such a unique hunting experience with herbivores. A pateraptor would be another dinosaur that I would love to see, with the right design. Really capitalize on the key aspects of the name. A pato, in reference to the apatosaurus, giving it a relatively long neck, and raptor with prominent dromaeosaurid and oviraptorid features. This dinosaur would have such a great opportunity to stand out and receive some welcome recognition, much better than Gigantoraptor. Now, if some extreme, and I mean some real, true care was put into effect, I think a mutant or hybrid dinosaur could be pulled off. Just one, though. We don't need a million Indominus Rexes or Ultimasauruses running around. Really focus on what made the mutants and Reborn not work. Find out what made the Indominus or Ultimasaurus or the Chaos Effect dinosaurs work and focus on those. 
Make this thing incredible. Make it tough to take down with an amazing design, a cool camouflage or hyper-exaggerated feature, and maybe even a secret mortal spot. Just make something well done and memorable. Tatum, if you're listening, I've got plenty of ideas for something like this. And now, the number one dinosaur that needs to be added to Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter is... Therizinosaurus. The Carnivore series is well known, I think, for including representatives from pretty much every primary dinosaur family. If you want to hunt a Hadrosaur, hunt Paraceralophus. If you want to hunt an Ankylosaur, Ankylosaurus. A Ceratopsian, Triceratops. The list goes on and on. But there's one primary group of dinosaurs that remains strangely absent from this lineup, and that's the Therizinosaurs. Raul Martin is my favorite paleo artist, and his outdated rendition of Therizinosaurus will always remain my favorite, and I'd love to see something like it added to a carnivores game. Even Dinochirus would be a great addition, if for some reason Therizinosaurus wouldn't work. I know a lot of people have requested a Therizinosaur to be in carnivores, and as one of the few games that strove to represent all dinosaur types, I think it's about time the franchise added these odd dinosaurs. So there you have it guys, I know I said top 5 and ended up with top 20, but those are my views on what I consider to be the top dinosaurs to add to Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter. But what did you think of the list? Were there any that I forgot or that would have made a better pick for the number 1 spot? What dinosaurs do you guys want to see added to the game? I always get tons of ideas from you guys on what dinosaurs to add and I love seeing them, so keep them coming. And thanks, of course, for all the support you guys have shown this channel. The Carnivore's Triassic Showcase hit 5,000 views in less than a month. And guys, that is mind-blowing. Like, I cannot even fathom that. And most of you have been very understanding to my leave of absence, and I am truly grateful for that. As I've mentioned before, I am extremely busy at university this year, but whenever I get the chance, I'll put out some quality videos for you guys, because you deserve them. Thanks again, everyone, and I will see you guys next time. We'll